Hey everybody, thanks for watching. In this chemistry lesson, we're talking about molecules and the prefixes and naming system we use to describe covalent molecules. First, let's begin by talking about prefixes. Molecules formed by covalent bonds are described using these specific prefixes that tell us the number of atoms within the molecule. For example, if there's one atom of a certain kind of element within a molecule, Molecule. The prefix for one atom is the word mono, or sometimes we just don't give it any prefix at all. If there's two atoms of a certain element within a molecule, we use the prefix di. If there's three atoms of a certain element, we use the prefix tri, which makes sense because that's kind of like triangle that has three sides. If a certain molecule has four of one atom type, we use the prefix tetra. I'll give you a few examples of this in a moment. If there are five of a certain atom, we use the prefix penta. This one also makes sense. Penta, kind of like pentagon that has five corners and five sides. If there are six atoms of a certain type of element within a molecule, we use the prefix hexa. That one also makes sense. Hexa, like hexagon. Seven is represented with the prefix hepta, and eight is represented with the prefix octa. Let's go over a few examples of common types of molecules that include covalent bonds and how we name them using these prefixes. We'll start with an easy one, water. Water is a molecule formed by covalent bonding. We usually just call it water. If we were being more specific using a chemical name, we might call it dihydrogen oxide. So when you look at that phrase, there's a few things you can see. It's dihydrogen. The prefix prefix di means there's two hydrogen atoms, and oxide refers to oxygen. But notice there's no prefix. Well, that tells us there's only one oxygen molecule. So when we write out the molecular formula for water, it looks like this, H2O. The subscript 2 agrees with the chemical name that there are two atoms of hydrogen. Notice the O here is by itself. That means there's only one oxygen atom in a water molecule. Let's try another one. Another common covalently bonded molecule and substance you might find around your house is hydrogen peroxide. That is the official chemical name, but another very descriptive chemical name we could give it is dihydrogen dioxide. Not very many people call hydrogen peroxide by this name, but if you look at that phrase, dihydrogen dioxide, what does that tell us about the molecular formula? Well, it's dihydrogen, so just like water, that means there are two hydrogen atoms, and this time the oxide, the oxygen atom, is not by itself. It has a prefix, di, and once again, di means two. So hydrogen peroxide, also called dihydrogen dioxide, is very similar to water, except it's H2O2. Two. This molecular formula tells us there are two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. Let's do another one. Rust is another very common substance that you might find around your home. Rust has a chemical name, and that chemical name is diiron trioxide. So what does that tell us about rust? The prefix di, once again, means two. So we know there are two iron atoms in the rust molecule, and we can also see that oxide, referring to oxygen, has the prefix tri. What does tri refer to? Like a tricycle or a triangle, it means three. So the molecular formula for rust, also called diiron trioxide, looks like this. Fe, that's the chemical symbol for iron, Fe2O3. That tells us there are two iron atoms and three oxygen atoms in a normal rust molecule. Now let's do another common substance you might have around your home, and it's called propane. This time I've changed it up and I've given you the molecular formula for propane. You can see in the molecular formula that there are three carbon atoms and eight hydrogen atoms. So based on that information, how would we name 
propane. What would be the chemical name given to propane? Since there are three carbon atoms, we would call it tricarbon, and since there are eight hydrogen atoms, we would call it octahydride. So here's what that name looks like, tricarbon octahydride. So you can see here the chemical name agrees with what we see in the molecular formula. Tri means three, indicating there are three carbon atoms, and octo means eight, indicating there are eight hydrogen atoms. Let's do another common chemical that might be found around people's homes, and that is ammonia. So try to do this on your own. Based on the information there, how would we write out the molecular formula for ammonia? So here's what that looks like. It's NH3. N is there by itself, indicating there is only one nitrogen atom, but H has the subscript three, which tells us there are three hydrogen atoms, and that agrees with the chemical name, nitrogen trihydride. Let's do another example. This time, once again, I've given you the molecular formula for a particular molecule, CO2. So based on the molecular formula, try to provide the chemical name for this molecule. The correct answer is carbon dioxide. The letter C stands for carbon, and it's by itself, so it gets no prefix. O stands for oxygen, and we know there are two of them, so we need to give it the prefix di. So CO2, the chemical name for that molecule, is carbon dioxide. So here's a challenge for you. I've given you several more chemical names and molecular formulas. Try to pause this video and fill in the missing information on your own. All right, hopefully you gave that a try. Carbon monoxide. Carbon is by itself without a prefix, so we know there's only one. Monoxide, the prefix mon, also means one. So the molecular formula for carbon monoxide is C. O. C stands for carbon, and it's by itself. O stands for oxygen, it's also by itself. Now let's look at the molecular formula given as N2O5. N stands for nitrogen, two is represented with the prefix di. O stands for oxygen, there's five of those, so we have to give it the prefix penta. So the chemical name for N2O5 is dinitrogen pentaoxide. All right, let's go to the next one. What about sulfur hexafluoride? Sulfur is represented with the letter S. It has no prefix, which means it's by itself. There's only one. Fluoride refers to fluorine, which is represented by the letter F. It has the prefix hexa, which is six. So the correct answer here is SF6, sulfur hexafluoride. The next one is similar. IF7, the correct answer is iodine heptafluoride. Iodine is by itself, so it gets no prefix. We could include the word mono, and that would still be correct, but it's not necessary. We can just call it iodine. And then for fluorine, there's seven of those atoms, so we have to give it the prefix hepta. So iodine heptafluoride. The next one is a really big, complicated sounding molecule called tetraphosphorus octoxide. The correct answer here is P4O8. Phosphorus is represented with the letter P. We can tell based on the name with the prefix tetra that there's four of those, so we have to write P4. Octo refers to eight, so we have to write it as P4O8. One more example, what about CCl4? The correct answer for the chemical name is carbon tetrachloride. Thanks for watching. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below. Thanks.